Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have another special review. This one is going to be review number 1900. So as I always do with these mini milestone reviews, I just want to give a huge thank you to you guys that have followed the channel over the last six and a half years that it is now. You know, whether you've liked, subscribed, shared, um, showed me around somewhere, sent me some beer, given me some information on the beers I'm reviewing, I just want to give a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart to you guys that have supported me over the last six and a half years that I've done this. You know, it, for me it's a bit crazy and kind of funny that there's about 3,000 people out there who like to watch a, bit, a mad Scottish Swede as I am now, uh, reviewing beer on YouTube and uh, you know, you guys are one of the best sources of information when it comes to craft beer. So I've learned a hell of a lot from doing this and a lot of that information has come from you guys. So like I say, a huge thank you to, uh, to you guys for everything that you guys have done over the last kind of six years or so. And uh, you know, there will be many more beer reviews to come. I don't plan on I don't plan on stopping this until I drop dead. So keep that in mind, and we'll see how we get on. Hopefully, I've got a good lifespan. We'll see. But yeah, for this review, then I thought we would cross the the Orison once again to Denmark, and we're actually going to review a beer that is kind of widely regarded as the first Danish craft beer, from what I understand, and it's probably one of the most famous Danish beers outside of Carlsberg. Of course, everyone in the world knows Carlsberg. But for this review, we are going to go to Tisterbrug, who's her from Nordirland and we're having a taste of the Limfjordens Porter which comes in at 7.9% ABV. So this one is a Baltic Porter. I guess you can also regard it as an Imperial Baltic Porter because it is, you know, up when it's above 7% I think that's when we start to get into Imperial territory. But like I say, a lot of people regard this as the first Danish craft beer and the interesting thing about this is for a beer that is such good quality, I have tried this one on tap before but never out of the bottle, and um, for a beer that is such good quality by Danish standards it's really pretty damn cheap actually in the supermarkets you can get this for somewhere in the region of like 10, 12 crowns depending on where you are. It will be a bit more expensive in Copenhagen right enough but from what I gather in the other places around Denmark you can pick this up for 12 Danish crowns which is somewhere in the region of like £1.50 or um, what will that be? That will be a bit like one euro eighty or something like that. So in Danish terms, this is a very cheap beer, particularly when you consider uh, how good quality it actually is. But yeah, um, as always with my reviews, then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery and in this case the beer. The history of this one is a little bit of a mishmash, so just uh, bear with me on that one. But of course, if you want to get straight to the tasting, you can just fast forward. There's all the usual social media in the video description as well. Um, do check out the links to my other. Uh, to the brewery website, to my other reviews that I'll do in the future from Tasted Brewery as well. Hopefully I can review some more of their beers at some point. There's all the usual social media in there. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Danish beers that I've reviewed for you before. That's constantly being added to, and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. But anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Tista Brugges and the uh, the Limfjords Porter. And I do apologise for any bad Danish pronunciations in this video. In Danish, they do tend to just miss out complete letters and things like that. The pronunciation in Danish is very different from the Swedish that I've learned. And uh, Although you can read it and understand what's going on actually. But anyway, to tell you a little bit about Limfjord's Porter and Tista Breukes then. So, the Limfjord's Porter was originally brewed by the urban Actia Alborg Brewery, and this brewery can trace its roots back in history to two once competing breweries. This was the Fitol Urban Brewery, which was founded back in 1860, and there's also the Bioskol Brewery at Limfjord, which dates back from 1880. So both of these breweries could be found in Alborg near the water, and later in 1889, Limfjord bought Urban, and a new German-style brewery was constructed, and this started production back in 1897. So the brewery grew strongly after this, and it struggled through the war years but did manage to survive. I think it, during the war years it was saying they were actually drying grains for the state to make ends meet but later in 1976 the urban brewery became part of the Euske group together with Ceres from Aarhus and Tor from Randers. 
But the brewery in Arlborough was closed in 1986 and today the Urban brand is part of Royal Unibrew which is the second largest brewing company in Denmark behind Carlsberg and the beer that they were most famous for was the Park Pilsner. Um, but Teestead Broekus where this brewery is brewed, uh, where this beer is brewed now dates back to 1902 and they produce a number of different beers including Porsa, Tea and also the new Nordic series of beers which is apparently quite interesting. They don't use hops in that apparently. But um, the Limfjord's Porter brand though was purchased by Tested Broekhus' brewmaster Peter Clemensen in 1989, who was the managing director of the company and had also been this since 1981. But Clemensen had apparently worked for Urban back in the late 1970s and over the following years after purchasing this uh, this brand, if you like, he continually played with the recipe before deciding in 1997 that he actually couldn't improve it any further. And he later retired in 2009 and was replaced by August Svenningsen as the managing director and Henrik Sorensen as the brewmaster. But the current brewmaster at Tasted Brewkers is Anthony Ogord Madsen. Um, but the beer itself is named after the Limfjord, which is a body of water in Öland or Jutland, as we would say in English, that connects the North Sea in the west with the Kattegat area in the east. You might have heard of Kattegat, of course, from the Vikings TV series. This is the body of water between Denmark and the uh, the west coast, of, between eastern Denmark, I should say, and the west coast of Sweden. But there's also a version of this beer where they've added extra licorice to it. I believe it's double the licorice that they've put in it. And there's another that's aged in American oak barrels for two months. Um, the one that, I think the one that has the extra licorice was first introduced in like 2015, but it proved to be um, very, very popular, so that it was it was actually put into full production the following year. There is also a collaboration between Mikula and uh, Clemenson that was a sort of that was a, a beer geek. What was it called? Beer geek Limfjords or something like that. It's a beer geek version of uh, this beer. So it would have been really cool to be able to review that for you. But I think it was only produced once, unfortunately. But that is a beer that I would dearly love to review for you on the channel. And of course, I'll see if I can get uh, the licorice version and the. Um, the egg version, the oak ver the oak aged version of this beer to review for you at some point in the future. But yeah, that was all the information I was able to find on the brand history and the breweries and things like that. So I hope that's kind of satisfied you. But if you want to learn a little bit more, of course, you can check out the Teestead Brewers uh, Brewery website in the description below. And of course, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. And that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on there. So um, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. As I mentioned at the start of the video, this one is a 7.9% Baltic Porter, I guess you can say Imperial Baltic Porter or Baltic Imperial Porter, not quite sure exactly how you would say that, but this one is brewed with caramel and English licorice and they've also got some smoked beechwood malt in there as well. I would suspect that perhaps it is coming from Weirman in um, in Bamberg and Franconia in Germany where you've seen me do a number of reviews and things like that before. But um, yeah, let's just... Um, you know, let's just have a little look at this beer and see how we get on then. So there you can see, there is the uh, the label of this one, you know, it's very, very recognisable. One of the weird things about this as well is that it says that it's a double brown stout, but the guys in Shiosk assured me that this is, a, you know, it is a Baltic porter. I don't know why it says double brown stout on that. It'd be interesting to hear from uh, Tista Brokers as to why the... Um, why they do that or why they say that on the thing but there you can see uh, Limfjord's Porter and of course you've got a nice bottle cap on this one as well um, yeah it tells you a little bit about the flavour on the back but we don't want to read um, too much about that it tells you it's um, it, it's got a, a taste of both rye and licorice so yeah we'll see how we see what we get out of that but this one is apparently best before the 25th of February 2022 so um, yeah let's get this guy out then and see how we get on with the taste and I'm really curious to see um, how this beer turns out actually you can see a nice little bit of smoke on the opening and we'll get this guy out into glass you can smell the licorice on this one straight away as you open it up we'll just put a little bit into the glass just now so we can sugar it about and we'll put the rest in a little bit later although most of it is actually in the glass at the moment but yeah as you can see with this one then it's poured a lovely dark um, ebony rosewood colour which to be honest is what you would expect from a Baltic porter, you know, you would expect it to be this lovely dark ebony kind of colour. There's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say medium beige head on this one, medium kind of tan, I don't think it's quite tan, maybe more of a medium beige head. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and you can see quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head there, but you know, overall it does look uh, pretty nice and just what you would expect from a, from a 
Baltic or an imperial port or whatever. So nothing surprising about this one in terms of its, uh, of its appearance. So let's take a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we get on. Oh, that smells really pretty good, I have to say. Yeah, that smells really nice. Um, so, with this beer, straight away, straight away you're going to smell the kind of nice German Rauch malts in here. Um, I'm pretty certain those, going from the aroma, I'm pretty sure that those are... Um, I'm pretty certain that those are the Weiermann malts because they've got that trademark smoothness. Of course, though, there might be some malteries here in Denmark, so it might well be using some Danish malt in here, but I'm pretty sure that will be German uh, Rauch malt in there. So you can smell that there's a nice sort of bready base to this beer. Those lovely woody notes are pushing out of it quickly. The smoky side of the beer, incidentally, I would say is more of a meaty smoke, a more of a kind of, you know, like a, a, ro a, a sort of aged ham kind of... Uh, aroma coming out of this one. Of course in Scotland we have peated smoked malts as well which are a little bit more earthy and grassy in their smokiness but this is definitely more of a meaty smokiness that you're getting out of this one. But that smells absolutely lovely. Um, you can definitely pick up the nice licorice notes in there although it is actually a little bit more subtle in terms of licorice than I was um, would have been expecting those nice aniseed notes. There's a good little bit of brown sugar in there. It's a kind of mixture between being heavy and syrupy, like a sort of treacly molasses, a little bit toasted as well, but you can pick up some of the sweetness. Uh, and there is a little bit of a kind of chocolatey note to this one. There's a bit of a milkiness to it, but at the same time, it's got a little bit of that darker um, high cocoa chocolate note that you would expect from uh, from a porter beer. So that's kind of interesting. Um, there's not really a roasty black malt quality to this one. I would say that the woody smoky notes just kind of smoothing that out a little bit in this beer. But, um, you know, overall, it's uh, the aroma of this beer is very, very nice. Um, the malt base is where all the complexity is, as you would expect. In terms of hoppiness, you know, there's a little touch of an earthiness in there. There's a little bit of a a kind of floral and grassy quality as well. I think they might be using German noble hops in here to be honest, just going from the aromas because the earthiness is slightly sweet but you've also got a little bit of a, you also have a little touch of you know that kind of typical um, lighter grassiness as well. There is a little touch of fruitiness in here too. Um, I would say yeah, it's got a little bit of a kind of slightly juicy figgy note to it. There's maybe some sort of black currants and blackberries coming out of the um, the note as well. But they're quite light and they're quite juicy, quite airy to be honest with you. But um, yeah, the aroma of this beer is absolutely lovely. It's not going to jump out of the glass too much at you. It's one of these ones that you have to get in and about a little bit more and just enjoy the complexity of it. But it's a lovely, lovely aroma this one. And you know... If you think about this beer back, you know, it was the, the recipe for this was completed back in like 1997 and around that time, um, I would think in Denmark you, you really wouldn't have much choice of beer and if something like this comes out, um, you know, it, it must have been a little bit kind of almost mind-blowing at the time. And I don't even know if they would have had, for example, some of the beers from America like Sierra Nevada at that time, to be honest. I think most of the Danish um, beer scene kind of kicked off in the early 2000s. So to have something like this available to them must have been, um, you know, something of a, you know, it must have been kind of a surprise when people discovered this beer actually. So it's quite cool, as I say, to come back and review this beer. But let's have a taste of this one now and see how we go on. As I always say, take a bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But let's have a taste of this one. I'm really curious to see how this turns out. This is the Limfjords Porter, probably the first Danish, properly Danish craft beer, if you like, from Tiested Broekus on uh, Nordøyland, the mainland part of Denmark, instantly connected to Germany over in Denmark. Denmark. Let's get stuck in. Slager, skull. Yeah, that's really nice actually. Really, really good beer. Um, so it, it, the one thing that's interesting about this for me as well is that you very rarely see porters being considered as traditional beers anywhere other than London. You get a lot of London porters. Um, so it's cool to see this kind of take hold in Denmark as well, which is, is cool. It's interesting to think that the most famous um, Danish beer, uh, if you like, or the first Danish craft beer, is a porter. It's kind of interesting. But then again, we always think of Baltic porters, and Denmark is, you know, 
that's where the Baltic starts really. But yeah, that's really nice. So let's try and break this flavour down a little bit then. In the middle of your palate, you're going to feel a nice, smooth, bready quality. Just blanket the middle of your tongue. I was seeing in the aroma that I wasn't really picking up any kind of roasty black malts, but they are actually kind of, they, they do push their way out of the flavour a little bit more than you might have expected, to be honest with you. The further you go into the aftertaste, you can feel a nice roasty black malt just pushing its way out of this beer. So that's an interesting point to make about this one. But it's smoothed out a little bit by these nice sort of roast toasty bread crust qualities as well. It does almost taste a little bit in the in the very backbone of the beer, like it's a kind of well fired bread crust actually, it's which is quite nice. And that's a typical thing that you'll get with German malts. I do suspect there is German malt in here. Um but yeah. Um the further that you go into the aftertaste as well, you're going to notice if you just go along the sides of your palate towards the front corners of the tongue and then move in a little bit, you are going to pick up some nice kind of woody qualities and that'll be the beech wood, that'll be the fact that the, the malt in this one has been, or some of the malt has been smoked by, by burning beech wood. So... That's, that's nice actually. The smokiness out of this beer, and by no means is this beer anywhere near as smoky as the likes of Schlenkerla or a special or anything like that. Um, the smokiness is just nice and subtle and kind of, it just almost feels like the whole bready aspect to this beer and the woodiness is infused with that smoky quality there. So the smokiness kind of sits um, near the woody flavours that I was talking about just a minute ago. In the centre of your palate you can definitely pick out a nice little bit of that brown sugary quality and to me it comes across as being kind of syrupy and sort of treacly molasses but at the same time it also has a little bit of a kind of charred quality as well and the further that you go into the aftertaste the more you're getting these sort of licorice aniseedy flavours coming out as well those are kind of sitting in the centre of your palate as well so for me it's quite sweet in the middle of your palate and as you move gradually out of the middle of that it starts to get a little bit drier and then you've got the woody and smoky flavours and of course those toasty black malt bits that are coming out of this beer too. Um, but this is this is beautiful. I mean, I certainly wouldn't hesitate to, to drink this again. And it's quite interesting for me because um, with porters, of course, the thing that distinguishes a porter, for me at least, compared to a stout, is the lightness in the mouthfeel. And the level of complexity in this beer that you have when it is actually fairly light in its mouthfeel is really impressive, actually. It's one of the, the real, uh, that's one of the real kind of interesting things about this beer. But yeah, it's absolutely lovely that, you know, this one, um, I would be very curious to try the double licorice one and the, the oak aged one. The oak aged one as well, what tends to happen when you, you barrel age a beer or whatever is the body will actually will actually kind of thin out a little bit. So that could be really interesting um, to see how that one turns out. I don't know if you can still get that beer, of course. But um, the flavours in this are just lovely and it does get a bit more roasty and toasty the further you go into it. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you do have a nice little bit of earthiness in there. I wouldn't be surprised if there are some English hops in this. I think there might be a mix of English and uh, German hops in here. I would suspect perhaps there's Fugel in here because the earthy qualities that this beer has are, it, it is almost a little bit ashy. Um, and I've always found that Fugo Hops gives you that kind of cigarette ash type flavour if that's uh, any way to describe it but you can definitely pick up a little bit of that in the back of the palate and as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue you've got a nice little bit of a sort of floral aromaticity there but that is a bit more reminiscent of a a kind of German noble hop in there. There might even be a, a little touch of the, the slightly more American floral quality there as well, which is interesting. I, I'm really not sure what hops they would have used in this, but I do suspect there is a German hop in there, and uh, I think perhaps a bit of English fugles. Otherwise, I'm not sure. But round the very front curve of the palate, you've got a little bit of that lighter grassy quality in there. Um, and then behind the front curve of the tongue, of course, that's where you get that oily bubble, where those, pardon me, juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And yeah, I can feel some of the smokiness actually pushing its way towards the front of the palate, which is unusual too, um, but I like it. So yeah, on the um, on the fruity side of this beer then, it's kind of what I was expecting from the aroma. I mean, there's a little bit of a, initially you're going to get a little, a little bit of a slightly sharper raisiny 
um, sweetness or something like that. But then the further you go into the aftertaste, or the, at the beginning it does become a little bit more juicy and figgy, but then the further you go into the aftertaste, you start to get more of the black currenty, blackberry notes out of this beer as well. Um, but overall, the combination of flavours in here is is really really nice, and uh, it is cool to see that they're you know it's cool to go back to one of the really old almost traditional beers if you like of Denmark and um, see how they've played you know just see where it all began actually and I've always said that in Scandinavia they're very very good when it comes to imperial stouts and imperial porters and stuff like this and if this is the the basis for that then you really can see why actually um so yeah Peter Clemenson from what I understand too in Denmark is considered uh, a little bit of a, a godfather when it comes to brewing actually one of the guys who really helped kind of kick it off so um, yeah that's it's, it's a beautiful beer this if you haven't had the chance to try this go and seek it out if you go if you're in Copenhagen go into one of the supermarkets and I'm sure you'll be able to come across one of these and you'll get it fairly cheap actually I probably paid a little bit more than I normally would uh, for this one because I bought it in Shiosk because I just saw it and was like right no need to review that um, but yeah in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer then I would say um, yeah it's a fairly mid-bodied beer this one it's at the bottom end of mid-bodied generally though carbonation is very smooth the mouthfeel is very smooth it does have a bit of wetness to it as well and um, in terms of bitterness you are getting a bit of that from both the malt base and from the hops in this one. I would suspect this beer might be about 50 or 60 IBUs, somewhere in that kind of region. I think I'm more inclined to say 60, to be honest with you. I think it will be around that kind of range. Um, but like I say, a nice little bit of hoppy bitterness. They're kind of ashy, and I suspect English Fugos might be at play here with this one. Um, but the malt base, like I say, it does have a little bit of that roastiness that pushes its way out in the aftertaste, but overall the malt base is quite smooth. A little bit of sweetness in there, and you've got some nice juicy fruity qualities to this beer as well. But overall, this is just a, a lovely, lovely beer, and it's cool to review something like this for you that is considered fairly historic in, uh, in one of my favourite beer countries. So yeah, let's just leave it at that then. This one is the Limfjord's Porter, a 7.9% Imperial Baltic Porter, however you want to uh, to term it, from Tistebrukus in Norgeland uh, over in Denmark. A beautiful beer and cool to review, something that is considered quite iconic in the Danish beer scene because I've got a hell of a lot of respect for the Danish craft beer scene, of course. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that then. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Tistebrukus as well. If you are watching in Denmark, do please give me some recommendations for some other more traditional Danish beers to review for you because that's something I would like to touch upon on the channel a little bit. But thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. The Limfjord Sporter from Tiste Brokers and Tiste and Nud Island over in Denmark. Slanget Skull, make sure you try this beer if you can and thank you again for all your support over the last six and a half years. Slanget Skull.